this is the long awaited video of my update of my surgery. So I had my surgery done June 11th. In two days, it'll be two months. I will be two months post-op. And honestly, I gotta talk and do my makeup. This video is gonna be quite long, so for those of you that wanna stick around and listen to my story about my BBL and tummy tuck, stay tuned. The hardest part from the surgery was, I know now. So the hardest part of the surgery was the fact that I got too many days. So for those of you that don't know, I got my surgery in TJ, Tijuana, and I flew out on the 10th. So let's, let's do this. I flew out on the 10th and um, got there to a hotel at night. And it was across, well, it was right across the street. It's called, um, Hey guys, I just got here to my hotel. Well, I got here like maybe 30 minutes ago and I took a shower. I'm waiting for my sister to get here. She was, should be arriving like around what happens. Um, but yeah, I'm really nervous. I will show you guys before and after pictures tomorrow. Um, I'll record as much as I can. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. I forgot what it's called. Well, anyways, it was right across the street from the clinic that I was gonna get surgery at and the recovery house. So the clinic was on one floor and the surgery, the recovery home was on the second, on, on, the, on the next floor up. I forgot what floor, I think the fourth floor. Well, anyways, everything was going to happen there in that place. Like, I didn't have to drive around or anything. That's the reason why I got the recovery home uh, in the same building because it's just, it was just more convenient. I have heard that when girls have to travel, and I got my massages there too. I just heard that when girls have to travel, if they stay at another recovery house that's not that one, they have to drive, like, they have to get a driver to get, take them over there. And, like, when you're moving around a lot and like it's hot and everything you just get really nauseous like i mean at least i do so it's not very fun to be traveling like fresh out of surgery in a car and then in, in tj the roads are horrible people drive horrible i'm sorry if you live there but everybody drives horrible and so yeah so then i stayed across the street the next morning was my surgery i woke up at the hotel from the hotel well actually I went by myself. Uh, I left the next morning like around 6 a.m. And literally, I just crossed the street. It's not even a big street. It's like this little street. And I checked in. And then I... They did like a urine sample. I had to do my lab... My lab... My lab test there? Yeah. So I did my lab test there. Urine sample. I remember signing a whole bunch of papers. And then they gave me some slippers. And they told me to change into those slippers right away so then i took my shoes off and put the slippers on and then that's when i went they called me to the back room they put me in a room the, the famous room sorry they put me in a room i'm pretty sure most of you guys that have been there know the, the room with the like the mirror and then you sit there and then someone comes and does there was this guy, it was kind of uncomfortable because there was this guy that came, he does like a heart, I, I'm sorry if I'm like butchering all of this, but he was doing a heart test or something like that where he put like some patches right here and he's like, I might have to lift up your, your sports bra because I was wearing, I think I was wearing another color of these. So I was wearing this one and he wanted, he needed to put them here, but he had to lift my, he, I had to flash him basically. And it was just weird because he was just like asking me a whole bunch of questions and I'm just like, oh my God, just get this done all. I'm, but that was the least of my worries. I mean, we just did that. I was a little bit nervous. Um, wasn't that nervous. They gave me melatonin when I first went in and it hit pretty fast. Like it relaxed me so good. Like that I wasn't even stressing. I wasn't even thinking about anything. So then, 
So then I remember a nurse coming in and she um she she brought my robe, she brought a mask, she brought um the compression socks. So then I put all that on. So I am about to go. I'm waiting for the doctor to come and do the um the consult where he writes over me and he asks me what I want. So I will update you guys. Um and then they took another person came in and they took blood out. And then they took that. And then after that the assistant my, my doctor's assistant came in and took me into another room and took pictures of me. Uh I was wearing like the little surgical underwear they gave you, the blue ones. And I remember like he would tell me to go like this to my arms. I still haven't seen those pictures because I'm I'm yet to go to my two month post op um what is it checkup? Yeah. I'm yet to go there and yeah, so I haven't seen those pictures yet. But he took pictures and then and then there we went to back into the room. He asked me what like what I was trying to accomplish. He got like this paper out with like an anatomy figure and then um we we talked about like he looked at he took my robe off and he, we talked about what like where fat was going to get grafted into what we needed and then he made sure that I was going to like what I was going to get if I was going to add arms if I was going to add upper back and all that good stuff so then there that's I had at this point I haven't seen the doctor my actual doctor Dr. Gabriela I haven't seen him and then I he leaves and then the nurse maybe like 20 minutes later I was there for like a good 40 minutes and then 20 like 20 minutes later after the, the assistant leaves um the other nurse comes back in and she says hey we're gonna take you to your room to your which is like the first night that you get out of surgery you're inside a room for one night hey guys i am getting um uh fluids before i go in doctor hasn't came in i haven't met him yet so he should be here soon to talk to me about what I want and everything. I'm this is where I'm gonna stay the first night. The bedroom's right here. And then the TV. They took me in that room. I was laying down for a little bit and then someone came and collected my money and asked me uh, what I was gonna add. I was gonna add hips, but the doctor said that I didn't need to add hips unless I wanted like a really exaggerated look. So then he said, she said, well then, then you won't have to. So it was less than what I thought. So originally my quote for 360 lipo, tummy, extended tummy tuck. I don't think, no, it's not an extended tummy tuck. A tummy tuck and then, um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Was 9,500. So 9500 but then I put a deposit when I made my appointment of 1000 So basically I was taking to this, on this day, 8500 was my whole surgery. I was going to add hips for another 1000 but since he told me if I really wanted an exaggerated look, then I could pay the 1000 and he'll add an exaggerated look. But I asked him, like, what would you think looks good for my body? Because I'm, keep in mind that I'm 5'7", so I didn't want to look like a, a hormiga, an ant. So then I remember like he, the doc, when the doctor came in, so at this point, the lady collected my 8,500. The doctor came in after, right after her. And he like assured me, like if I wanted to add something else, like if I wanted to add like underarms or something and, or in between my thighs, but I didn't, I didn't now that I, if I would have known what I know now, I should I would have added in between my legs lipo because I have like when you shave, like when you're walking or you're wearing a dress and you shave, like I have to wear shorts because it's like too close together. Now maybe I mean if I work out, it'll kind of burn off if it's fat. I'm pretty sure it is, but but yeah. So I kind of went like on about my story time. Anyways, I'll get back to the actual question itself.
But okay, so then at this point, doctor comes in. Um, I'm gonna go add some ice to this because it. Okay, I'm back. So at this point, um, the doctor walks in. We talk about what I want, what I want to accomplish. He said that you know if he took out more. Whoa! I went upstairs. If he took out more of my um. Like my my waist then he would just have to fill in my hip dips. So I didn't need an exaggerator. Like I didn't need to add hips when he was already gonna fill them. So then that's what he did. So at this point, I'm not regretting anything because I don't need uh, underarm lipo. At least I think I don't, but uh, I heard that one hurts a lot, a lot, a lot. So if you were thinking about getting that, just make sure you are ready for pain. It hurts more than the actual lipo itself. But, okay, so at this point, I'm so nervous because this doctor already rolled all over me. He said that it was gonna be a little bit of time and then that we would, they would take me back. So then they connect me, the doctor leaves. I'm already like sketched up and everything, ready for surgery. Um, I lay down, they put a cap on my head and I'm still in the post-op room. Okay, so I, the doctor just came in, rolled on me, and we're ready. We're going in, and I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, you wanna cry? My head hurts because my brain has just been spinning as to what I'm gonna look like, what's gonna happen, and then my girls, like my husband and my babies, I don't know, I'm just, I'm going crazy. Just put me to sleep already. So I'm sitting there on the bed. I'm so nervous. And then, like, it, they make the room really warm. Because I guess the when you get out of surgery, it's really cold. But, yeah. And then, so, like, I think, like, 15 minutes pass by. And then the nurse comes for me and says that they're ready. At this point, I'm, like, shitting bricks. I'm so sleepy. I... And she's like, okay, let's walk. So they walk, she, she walks with me. And she's holding my IV bag and I'm so nervous. And then she says, put your slippers down. I wish, man, one thing I really wish I would have done is recorded that stuff. But I was so nervous that I didn't even think about grabbing my phone. I remember turning off my phone when she got me from the room and then I just put it on the table. And then she's like, you can put everything here. You're, everything's safe. Um, what else? Yeah, so then they take me to the room, they lay me down, she took off everything. I'm I'm butt naked here on this big tall table and everybody's just around me busy talking like a, it's a normal day and I'm over here like, can, can y'all cover me or something? But I didn't say anything, I was just so nervous, I wasn't even thinking about that. The anesthesiologist was so nice, I remember, I remember talking to her about a lot of things actually, like life and everything and 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 then all of a sudden I remember getting sleepy. But after that, I I remember I didn't get put down like completely. So so now we were already the surgery had already started and then like when I was on my stomach and they were doing the lipo, I'm assuming they were doing a lipo on my back, I woke up. But I was tied to the table like this with my arms like on my on my stomach and I remember I woke up and then the, the lady's like I told her I'm like I can feel I just felt pressure like I felt like the big stick going up my back I just felt like a lot of movement and I was just like moving a lot like this and I told her and she's like are you okay she's like you're not gonna feel anything and I'm just like put me back to sleep I don't want to I don't want to remember this and I just remember when I woke up I was so cold goodness I've never Never been so cold in my life. I felt like I was freezing to death, which I probably was, but oh, it just was so cold. That room was so cold and there, I just heard the music. The doctor was just like talking and then all of a sudden I started freaking out. And I remember the doctor, my doctor, not the sister or anything, grabbing my hat and saying that it's okay, that estoy quedando muy bonita, que no, no me preocupe, que no me relaje, que no voy a sentir nada. And then all of a sudden the lady put me back to sleep. So then they're already done, I guess, and they were going to switch me from the operative table onto the 
the bed that was gonna take me wheel me out to my room and I remember them grabbing like the blankets and like throwing me on the table and it was just a whole bunch of faces like all around me and they just threw me on the table on the other bed to take me to the room and I remember them saying oh my god quedo bien bonita uh wow muy, muy buen hecho doctor Cabrera and they were just like telling him like hyping him up saying que quede muy bien que you know he's the best and I just remember like me waking up and saying that are we done or am I still alive and then they were like si sí, que es hermosa blah 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 so then So then they took me to to the room and when we got to that room it was so cold i remember the heater being on though but i was so cold and they didn't put the faja on me yet i don't dr cabra doesn't do that right after surgery i was in a um like like a mummy like literally all bandages and everything and i was wearing i think no i wasn't wearing anything on my yeah i was just bandaged up all over my legs and everything so, so then they throw me everything. So, so then they throw me on the bed, and I remember being so cold, and my teeth would just like, like I remember hearing the noise of my teeth. I forgot the word is, but because I was so cold, and the lady like she they had warm blankets. And they put those on top of me. So I'm in the room. They bring my first meal. At this point, I don't feel anything yet. I'm still very numb. Um, then nighttime, I think it's like 6, and they bring me my dinner. And they bring me my dinner, and they... I'm done eating and everything, and then later on, like maybe two hours later, the nurse comes in to shower me. This is the worst thing ever because I did not want to get up at all. So then the nurse comes in to shower me and it's like a super fast shower. It's just to get all the blood out of my like arms, like um, off of my arms and my back. So then she's scrubbing me and everything and I'm like leaking, come, I'm leaking through my, through my drains so much. So then I don't think she washed my hair that day. No, I don't think so. Uh, so yeah, she showers me, puts me back into my faja, lays me down, and I'm in bed already still. Good morning, guys. I just had my first shower, and it was the most painful thing I've ever had to do. Getting up was one of the toughest. I mean, I was really strong, and I didn't cry, but it was really painful. Um, but they are, the lady is really good here. She kind of got in a better mood. I don't know, it was weird. But she's up to date on my meds. She showered me by herself, so I'm fresh. So I feel really good. Um, pain level is about a six. It hurts in my abdominal area. It burns so much. Um, I don't feel I got upper and lower back lipo. I don't feel that at all right now. I can't imagine the girls that get mommy makeovers, like they're breasted and everything. But yeah, so I'm in my faja now and I'm waiting for breakfast. But I feel so much better being in my faja and I'm clean. I wash my face. I still haven't felt any. I, at this point, I haven't felt anything. It's everything's numb. Your the anesthesia hasn't worn off yet. So. My legs are still asleep. I was able to walk from my bed to the shower and they have like a chair and you just sit there and then she carries you back. Not carries you, but like she brings you back, which helps. And yeah, so this happened like in 20 minutes. She was already like, I was already back in my faja. Well, I was already in my faja because at this, at when I, before I showered, I was not in my faja. I had my band-aids on. So, so then, yeah, I'm in my faja. So then, uh... I slept pretty good the first night because I, I was still very tired from the surgery, but the next couple of nights was were pretty rough. The next night I left to my actual recovery house, which in the morning I think they went for me like around 11 and they took me upstairs. There were two nurses that took me upstairs. 
So then I go into my room. I'm there's only five rooms and I'm in room five. So then I don't get my massage yet until like two days later. But as I was there, you know, they say walk, do all these things. And at first I wasn't like going out of my room or anything because it was kind of new still. But like after the second day, you're just so tired of being in there. Oh my gosh. And this, I stayed there until the 21st. So my surgery was the 11th in the morning. And I stayed at this recovery home until the 21st. Uh, it was like 170 a night with like food included and then this was besides the fact that I had already paid for two Faja so they gave me one came with my surgery and I bought another one for 180 190 mm. it's always good to have two for when your old one is washing and you have to use the, the clean one your used one is washing you have to use the clean one uh, so that way that you're not you're not without a faja for so long until you're it finished because it has to air dry too. Hey girls, so this is what I look like right now. My butt is still pretty swollen, but I'm loving it so far. So he did a really good job. I got upper and lower back lipo, but. I have been able to get up now. I was walking earlier with one of my surgery sisters. So that was pretty good. And now I'm just standing just to drain more. But but yeah, I'm really happy with the results. I'm so excited that finally it's it's getting a little bit easier now. So so yeah. So then I'm at this recovery house and then I don't remember much about the days but i just remember it was really hard like the nurses are nice not all of them though there was a few like a few rough ones but like i feel like i'm talking so much and i'm just gonna bore you guys but um So at this point, I'm at the recovery house. Um, you can go out to the lobby. I would go out to the lobby after five when they would close and like nobody, cause a lot of other people would be there from, cause that's where they had the massages. And they would dry and they would be like the, the lobby would be full. But after five, it was empty cause it was closed. So then we could like the girls that were staying in the recovery home that I was in, they could walk around and go to the balcony and stuff. So then yeah, I would come out after five. I think after four, yeah. When they close diamonds, this is where I come and sit. They have like this brown cushion seat. I would do that. I ended up meeting, I didn't know the first girls that were there because I think some of them were already leaving the day that I got there and or the next morning. But I remember meeting a few new girls that had just gotten surgery también after me like the next day like there was girls arriving and leaving every all the time but what i do regret was getting so many days there because like i said it, it was very hard like not only being so encerrada but like not knowing anyone there i would crave foods from outside like i know i'm a fat ass but it was tough it was tough girl i forgot to put on my headphones But yes, it was very tough in at, at that recovery house. Um, but I was treated so well. Like, I think I wouldn't have... It was best for me to stay there because I don't think I would have, like, had the same experience, like, same recovery over here at home. Especially, I have two babies, two under two, so it would have been hard. It would have been very hard. I couldn't lift anything. I couldn't even bend down. Well, that was, like, the first four days I couldn't bend down. But I think like on the sixth day or fifth day, I got a cold. I always, I don't know why this happens, but I get a cold when the air is on. 
like in the room like really cold i don't know see it's because like i kicked the blanket off at night or something but i get very very sick the next morning so then i got really sick the next morning and i remember i had a really high fever and like i had the chills and i thought i had an infection oh my god i was freaking out so bad and the nurses like there was a nurse there was this nurse that didn't really care so much and like i think it was a saturday and she would like message no like a sunday and she would message the doctor and like she was kind of low-key those kind of nurses that are freaking out and they don't know how to hide it you know like have you ever like seen them like those movies where like someone's getting an ultrasound and like something's wrong in the ultrasound and they make a face so she was one of those I'm assuming when you're in the medical field, like you can't make a face if you're not the doctor. You can't, you can't freak the patient out before you know what's true, you know? So then like, that's how she was. And I was over here thinking like, you know, I have an infection and she's not telling me or she's so uh, concerned and the doctor's not here. They were on call. Well, they're on call. They are on call on weekends, especially Sundays. But you know, I was just freaking out. So I was freaking out. Long story short, um, it wasn't an infection. It was just a cold, I guess. I got prescription medication. I feel like that was, was that that is what was making it worse. Like, have you ever taken Theraflu and like you get the chills and like the next day like you don't have fever anymore? That's how I felt. That's how I felt with this. Oh, I don't even know if I should wear makeup. That's how I felt with this um with this medication. I don't know, I don't know if it was a medication or not, but um well anyway, so then I kept getting chills and she's like, I'm gonna put you in the shower and at that point like I didn't even want to move. Like I just kept telling her that I didn't want to take a shower, that I just wanted the coldness to go away. Or yeah, it was cold, but my body was very hot. So then she's like, I need to shower you in order for you to feel better and I wanted to shower with hot water, but when you're first like out of surgery, you can't shower with hot water or else you're gonna swell up. At least that's what they say. I still haven't looked it up that it's true, but you would know. Whoever knows, knows. But I don't never search that up. But but yeah, so the water was she wouldn't let me put it hot. So then I was freezing in the shower, but naked. I just remember being so mad. I was so mad at her. I didn't act like a bitch though. I was so I was just like very irritated, but I wasn't showing it at all because I didn't want to be rude and I knew that she was just trying to help me. But so then yeah, she changed me fast and put me back in the covers. And yeah, I did feel a little bit better. She was right. But it was very tough to to get up from my bed under the covers. So then <sighs> I told her that I wanted to stop the meds and then the, that nurse said fine whatever I want and then another nurse came in she's so cool she was like you're really gonna be a baby about not taking your medicine and I'm like it's because it's making it worse honestly I don't got the time for this like I'm worried about something else and then on the third day TMI I got my period and that was horrible because you're so each other already and when you are on your period you get even more each other and it's just horrible oh my god I think that was the worst part, that, that getting my period. Like, I was like, okay, not now, Mother Nature. Like, okay, we're glad that I'm not pregnant, but, like, not now. Don't want to know now. Like, I don't know. It was just, I was so irritated that I got my period. But, but yeah, so, luckily, it doesn't last so long. It's just four days. And so, then, I was off of it by the time that I was leaving. And the worst part from the surgery was the drain that they put in your bikini area oh god did i want to cry every single day i couldn't move so fast like i think if i would have not had that drain there in the location that it was like it would have been better easier and and just better because it was just horrible like um it would pull every time because i had like a like a what do you say like a like a stitch like on my bikini area so every time that i would move it would just pull on it so that was not fun at all
time that I was sick, I ordered pho from like Uber Eats and I didn't even finish. I didn't even eat it at all because I was just, those are those moments where like you feel so sick that you don't even want to eat. Like that's how I felt. It was horrible. Oh God. I remember right now and I just, I regretted my surgery so bad that day. Those couple of days that I was sick, it was just, and I just felt bad because I just kept complaining and the ladies were like trying to help me and it just wasn't, it was not fun at all. So I'm doing a light makeup. I'm not even talking about what I'm gonna wear. I'm just gonna do something simple, nothing too dramatic. But, but yeah, it was, it was a tough, tough couple of days there. So yeah, I started going out more or outside. Uh, it started getting better. I was able to like sit down now and the foods were okay. I was in like a, one of the days, oh God, they, I don't know why they serve this though. They serve pozole and I was cycling. So like it's mantojada, you know, like it's hot, it's, it's good, but it has too much maize and that maize makes you hinchada, like especially after surgery, like it just depends on what you eat, that everything makes you hinchada, you know? But, dude, when I finished, it was so bomb. But when I finished eating that, girl, I was in chill as fuck. Like, I was so uncomfortable. Like, I just wanted to be naked the whole time. And they kept wanting to force me to put me on my faja. And I would just have a charla and they would get mad. And I understand. I understand I should have, like, worn it more. But I was just too in chala. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why they gave me that. I'm all eating it. I could have not ate it. I had options. But. I'm not going to bake today. I'm just going to go with this. This studio fix. But. But yeah. So my total stay at the. At the, at the resort was 2,800. Uh, and that was not including tips. I, I tipped the ladies, like, yo sola, like, like, individually. Like, I know you're not supposed to do that, but I prefer that than for them not to receive it. Um, I tipped the ones that were good to me. Like, not the ones that were just going there just because. I remember, I think it was, like, the second day I needed to go to the restroom, and this is the time that I couldn't get up by myself. And I told the lady to help me, the nurses, and then... She comes and looks at me and she's like shorter than me obviously but like she complains that I'm heavy and like girl like I'm 165 pounds with a big ass but I know that I was the same the same weight like I was not like if you can't if you're gonna be a nurse I'm sorry to say this but like you need to help like you need to not complain if she's heavy if she's stinky if she shit herself if she did this like you don't say shit like no girl like that was un unnecessary especially for someone recovering someone just got a surgery like you don't go saying oh estás bien pesada and i have a video of that i'm gonna show you i'll answer that right now right now do you see do you see that she was a bitch i'm sorry whoever that was i never saw her again though i did come i did complain to the other nurse about her i'm like oh that girl the other nurse just like maybe feel heavy or maybe I don't know, you just feel some type of way, like you're recovering, you're emotional, you miss being home, like, and someone tells you that, I don't know, either I'm exaggerating or I'm not, but, um, I had a question, if you can see my tummy tuck with a, with, with a bikini, no, you cannot, you cannot see it with underwear either, just depending on what kind of bikini you wear, obviously, but you cannot see it. And I have not worn a bikini yet, but I know this the answer to this question because I have underwears that look like bikinis, like bathing suits, and you cannot see my scarf. Mm. There was a lot of um, multiple uh, repetitive questions, like how much my surgery was, where I stayed, I stayed at Diamond's Recovery Home, house, 
home. I don't know, I forgot what it's called. And my surgery was at Lotus Med Group in TJ. Uh, it's a silver tower there in Tijuana. It's not so far from the border. It's like 25 minutes. Um, my doctor was Dr. Cabrera, Dr. Omar Cabrera. And what are the questions? I'm filming on my phone and I have these questions on. But back to the question of what would I have done differently if I would have, what I would have, like the local, what I would have done differently. Once you originally book with Diamond uh, Recovery, you have to stay the days that you booked for. They're going to charge you for the days that you booked for because they already locked in those days for you. Like, So I had booked from the 11th, which is the day of my surgery. No, the 12th, which is the day after because I have to stay one night in the in the surgery like place there in the clinic for like infections or any... Uh, anything that happens just to be safe so I wish I would have gotten less days because I was good to go by like the sixth day I believe yeah like I was I was set and even the fifth day I mean yeah, maybe because I was sick but like I just wanted to be home like you're just like really homesick if you have kids you miss your kids like you miss your husband you you want to go home you miss your bed Okay, so you miss your bed, you miss everything. It's just hard. It was hard, especially being sick. I felt like I was complaining so much. I did get my nails done. Um, there's a salon like down on the other level and I did go get my nails done because I was feeling very, they told me not to get my nails done before surgery. I did have my toes done though, they didn't say anything. As, as a matter of fact, I didn't even look at them until after. But, but yeah, so they told me not to have my nails done. The reason why is because if you were, like, something were to happen during surgery, they could tell by the blood in my nails. Uh, what else? I, um, oh, when I got my hair braided, I heard that at Cocoon, I don't know if you guys heard about Cocoon, they braid your hair there. But over here at, at Diamonds, they don't. These ladies are, they in and out fast. But, yeah, they braided my hair at the salon. She charged me like five bucks, which was fine with me because I did, just didn't want it in my way. And this, I have really long hair, like extremely long hair. So it was just in my way every time they showered me. Like I didn't want to even wash my hair because it was just all over the place. When I have them braided. She didn't really do a good job though because I already had dirty hair when she braided it. So it was already kinda if like if I don't if I don't dry my hair, it dries wavy and curly. When I dry it, it like kinda looks semi straight. I just have to calm it down with like the pasarle la pinza the the strainer. So so yeah, so then I got my hair braided, everything was cool and then uh, I was like counting the days that I would drain less than, I believe it's 25 milliliters, so they could take the drain out. Like I said, I didn't like my drain, the one in between my legs. I hated that one so much. So I was just waiting and counting the days that they would take that drain out. And then like, they, they took out the day that I was going to leave, actually, the morning that I was going to leave. So I was still on there, but... So then I didn't have a drink when I was on the plane, which was, thank God. But, what else? But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the hardest part was sleeping. I think that's, yeah, that was the hardest part. Uh, I did get asked if I went alone. I did go alone, yeah. Inside the surgery, you can't really take anybody, like, in the actual room itself. 
Uh, I flew back. I got picked up by, um, they have like drivers there that take you to the airport all act. Like they charge you, I think like 80, they charge me back. Um, but yeah, they charge me 80 to go back to my, to my room, to, to, to the hotel, to the airport, got on my plane. My sister picked me up here at the airport here. And then I came over here at home. My mom was waiting for me. My parents, my, yeah, my parents were waiting for me here at the house. And they were so excited to see me. I was so excited to be home. My girls just freaking were excited too. It was just all exciting. Um, after that, recovery has been pretty hard. I'm going to try to hurry up. Recovery has been hard here at home because right now I'm in between getting my, my, my new Faja, but it hasn't arrived yet. And like that's even if it fits me because the one that i have the, the one that they gave me at the surgery and the one that i bought they're already really loose so there's just no point like i need my faja asap it's okay i ordered it with time and it's still not here yet which sucks but but yeah so i'm waiting for that and i can show you guys what we're working with let me just put on some um well actually i'll show you guys now I can get to the video fast. Let me just take this chair off. Okay, so we're just I'm gonna move my hair out of the way. Okay. So this is me at two months, almost two months post op. My belly button is a little red. I have to, and it's still very hard too, but this is me from trying to. This is me from the side. This is me from the front. You see how you can't really tell Show you my scores as well without flashing anybody. So my scar finishes right here. And that's pretty scary. And right there. So I believe an extended tummy tuck would go all the way. Like, I don't even know. It doesn't say extended tummy tuck on the thing. I thought he would stop over here because I didn't knee over here. But he said that if he would have stopped here, you would have been able to tell like a little bolita, like a little ball right here, like where it ended. So he's like, it's better to always go over here. So, and I said, whatever. But, but yeah, and then it just, it's like right there. So I used to have a whole bunch of uh, stretch marks coming up like here. And there's a whole new belly button, but I still have, you can see them like kind of like right here, but that does not even bother me. The scar is very red these days, but I've been trying to put body um, bio oil on it to try to get it to lighten up. But yeah, so I mean, it's I, right here, I need to start. It's like very swollen right there. This is where I had the, the light bulb going down, like I'm going down through here and Sometimes, right now I'm drinking a lot of coffee, but sometimes you're able to tell like the line, this line right here. So I just need to, this is, but yeah, so this is what it looks like. Okay, this is what my butt looks like. But yeah, this is what my butt looks like. I don't even know if I can show you guys, like, this is what my butt looks like. I'm sorry to flash you guys, but you see how you can't even see the, the, the scars from the back either. But I did ask him for an upside down heart shape, and yeah, I do have some stretch marks in the back, but nothing 
and now everything fits me so big this used to not fit me like i used to but yeah and these are my my hips so if i tighten this a little bit it's not a lot of hip but i do would have wished that i, I don't know that i would have added hips just because everything like all the swelling has gone down a lot by a lot um but yeah the swelling has gone down so it's just very it's not so small anymore i guess you get used to looking at it the other day i was talking to one of the girls and she's like yeah everything went down so i feel like it's not even there anymore like i look like i was before but i have to remind myself when i look at the pictures like the so overall before my surgery like i had already been planning it for a year i was saving up for a whole year and I was very depressed like I don't know I was very depressed I had a lot of stretch marks extra skin I was feeling very like self-conscious like I wouldn't even want to wear a bathing suit or something that showed like a little bit of my stomach I wouldn't even wear crop tops and getting Ferencia now you know I can wear whatever I want and everything like the majority of the stuff looks go looks good I just need to well now I just kind of need to maintain it and start working out but that's what I plan on doing is like doing that for you guys but I don't sleep with my faja on I do wear it the majority of the day ahorita no me la puse so that I can record this video for you guys but I need more more compression it does still hurt like if I get grabbed on my sides like it still hurts a lot uh, so I try not to sleep like right next to my husband because he could probably like go like this and it would hurt a lot uh, if I grab my girls like on the like on the like if I hold them I have to hold their little feet because if they kick or something they hurt me but that's that's still very sore like especially on the sides that hurts a lot uh, I can sit on my butt already but my back gets more like tired easier now uh, I can I sit at restaurants now I did feel weird at first like sitting at restaurants on hard chairs but I got over that pretty quick. I guess you just get used to like the different kind of pressures on your butt. Mm. Do I plan on getting more work done? I remember that question. I don't plan on getting a second round. I know a lot of girls go back for second rounds. No, I just wanted to maintain it. That's my plan to maintain the look, maintain results, which means going to the gym, eating semi-healthy um i don't want to lose weight so i still need to see what kind of plan i have next for for the gym i do want to weight lift get these arms a little toned in my legs uh what was the question that i remember getting asked i literally was about to say do I plan on having more kids and why did I get surgery right now that I'm I'm 26 years old? Uh, so I've been planning the surgery for four years. That's why I had my girls so close in age together because I wanted to get my surgery. I wanted to feel good. I wanted to be able to wear a dress. I never really liked wearing dresses because I didn't have a butt. And I know that sounds horrible. I mean, there's there you could be worse, but. But yeah, so I've been wanting it, but I was always told, you know, ten hijos primero, que, que, or you're going to regret it, you're going to mess your results up, and blah, blah, blah. So I had my girls. I don't plan on having any anytime soon. I'm not closing the factory. No, I'm, I'm just want to wait. The, the, the plan is to wait until my girls are in school and see if maybe later on I want another one because I do want a boy so but for now 
It's not in the. It's not in my plans. It's not in our plans. But you know what? Like, this really helped my. And I know a lot of there's a lot of people against this like surgery because people are gonna wear the gym. Let me tell you this now. A gym, the gym might make you lose weight, but from what I believe, it does not make your ass grow. It does not at all. You might have like a really good fit ass, but I wanted hips, and a gym is not gonna give you hips. Digan lo que digan plebes. But anyways, well yeah. Uh, so yeah, so the gym was not gonna give me this. Uh, I always done diets and everything. That's I've always been very skinny, so I was not gonna get hips and a butt with the gym. I was just gonna get skinnier and more, and just look fit when I wanted to kind of have like the curve. So now I do, and I'm so thankful that I was able to achieve this. And I know many of you guys probably want one, and and you're thinking about it. It's just, but it is something to really invest in. It is very expensive. Um, I was very lucky and fortunate to be able to uh, get the money for that and, and save up and have uh, the best partner that was able to take care of my girls while I was gone for all those times. So shout out to my boo thing. But yeah, it was it was very fun experience. I mean, now I really regretted it when I was over there and I was sick and recovering and everything. But I think I just realized that I'm very chill on it. Like it's, there's just no, there's no, no lying about that. 